Hey, 10 o'clock, welcome back. And this bike needs to run. After two and a half years on the bench and 10 months without running, I think the next thing we need to do is start the engine. So we can't do that without some petrol. So let's jump in the car, go and get some gas. Wish us luck. Of it. Honestly, this bike has been off the road now for ooh, two and a half years. There hasn't been fuel in that tank for all that time. I've got to make sure the tap itself doesn't leak. I did say that I was just going to rebuild it. I looked at the price of a rebuild kit and I thought, well, I'll see if it leaks first. <laughs> Don't need it. The tap itself works okay. It was all working fine when it went to bed. It hasn't been run for 10 months. Now that could present other problems. Obviously nothing to do with sludge or rust in the tank because that's been dry and it's been off. But the carbs, I did run the carbs out last time I ran this. I ran the engine without fuel in it for about eight or nine minutes until it started to cough. Hopefully that emptied the float bowls in the carbs so there shouldn't be any sludge in them either. But again, before I start ripping them all apart to check, we'll just fire up and see what happens. That's all we've got to do. Now that means bodywork off completely, check the tap underneath. I'll put a little smidgen of fuel in there and just see underneath if it leaks, if it actually leaks out the main seal, turn it on and off because it's not a vacuum tap, it's a gravity tap because it goes into a pump. Uh, that also means I've then got to connect up all the electrics. I've got the battery to put in, I've got an earth to drill and tap and connect, which I haven't done yet, then plug all the electrics in, get everything plumbed together, hit the button and hope. What do you reckon, man? Let's, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Right, wish me luck. Let's get stuck in and get the bodywork off. Right. At this point, what I'm doing, just where I've sighted the ECU and the fuse box there, I'm plugging them all in just to fire up the bike today. When this is done, I shall undo all this binding off the loom, take it all off, sight all the wiring exactly where it needs to be relaxed and comfortable, then rebind it and I'm going to put some armoured conduit over the top, that coiled armour, so that it doesn't rub or chafe against anything. This also gives me a chance with this metal frame, I just had to file out a little tiny notch to get one of the plugs through. It didn't quite fit through, make a little notch in it so it fits through easier. Little tiny adjustments, which again is why I haven't painted it yet, because until it's all finally assembled and running, I'm going to have to keep doing it. And that's exactly what this next bit is. If you look on here, these are the two plugs for the ECU, and it has this little earth wire there, which would have originally bolted to the original tail frame, which I've completely eliminated. So that's going to go in there. I just wanted to see where that falls. And that looks like a perfect location straight in there. So I'm just going to drill into there. This is three mil thick, so I'm going to tap that directly with a little thread tap, and then I can screw that down to there, nice and out of the way, because it isn't very long, there isn't much extra, and I don't want long bits of wire. And earth has to be as short as possible, and that is perfect, straight to the frame right there. There we go. I agree that's a little bit better, a bit neater. All right, let's thread it all back in. So when this gets powder coated, the fact that it's threaded on the inside, I'll just run a tap or painted, whatever it gets. I'll just run a tap back through it. Just make sure that it's a good earth, good sound ground wire. Right, putting all this together now, a um, couple of little relays there that I've got one that goes in there, that one goes in there. That's how I've designed them to be, nice and out the way, the panel's here. And there's another one of these little earth leads just there. So that's got a little hole drilled there and tapped exactly like this one just now. And it will be a little M6 Allen screw in there and that will hold that earth like that 
in place. Now, as you can see, if I just did that up now, that's way too long. The end of that is touching the ECU, which stops it from moving. It's rubbing on it. So in the end, that could cause, uh, at the very least, sort of impact damage on this, but that's the plastic body of the ECU. And if you crack this, you trash the ECU. That really doesn't want to stick inside that hole any more than about there, like that. That's about the most that wants to stick inside to give lots of clearance here. So I need to cut this down. So here's a quick tip, which I'm sure you know. All of you already know, I'm gonna show you just on the vise to cut it down without messing up the thread. Two nuts on there. Okay, don't just put one, put two on and do it up to a point where you want to cut. So I want to cut roughly there. Just exposing the amount that I want to cut off. Now, this is a little M6, six millimeter bolt, so I don't need to slit these nuts. However, if it's a large nut, come in close on this pen, here's a little trick. Just take a hacksaw and slit the nut. Anything over about M6, take your hacksaw and saw the nut through that way. So as you slit it, you've allowed that nut to be closed. When you put it in the vise and you do the vise up, then that nut will crush down on the thread. It will hold the bolt still, but it won't damage the thread. The little M6 ones, these little nuts are so soft, doing that up will squeeze on the thread just about okay. And if you start cutting M6 nuts, you can then distort the thread inside them. But there we are. If you want to hold a thread still in the vise, slit a nut or two, and then hold it in there, crush it in and it works. Right, I'm going to cut that off. Here we are. Now before we do anything else, drop it out the vise and screw the two nuts further on, exposing the end like that, then get a little file. And with the little file, just invest in a few of these little dinky ones. Just take out the worst of the burrs on the end. You don't need a grinder or anything. And then put the head of the screw in there and undo the nuts. As you undo the nuts, they will clean the thread and wiggle them backwards and forwards as you go. That just cleans the thread. Because when you cut a thread with a hacksaw, you will invariably damage it here. You'll make a disrupted end to it and it won't screw in. And you do it, just make sure you'll feel a little resistance. So you take the nut off. There we are. Now that is cut short, ready for the job, and it will screw straight into my thread without cross-threading or anything like that. Easy, isn't it? No issues. Again, apologies to all you experienced wallers out there who know what you're doing. There's always someone new who maybe doesn't. Nice and tight, and that is nowhere near the ECU causing problems. Other little things like this wire, all this wiring here will all be clipped neatly away, so it's all one just very neat little loom there. That's all for later on. Again, just a start up today. Interestingly enough, these batteries don't come with any form of fasteners. So I'll just use the one off the old battery, which should just park nicely in there. Right, here's another little tip for you. Uh, have you ever had those situations where your battery screw goes in, but the screw, the battery screw, won't reach the nut, the little square? oblong nut that is at the bottom. Now on these lithium batteries they put a little platform down the bottom there so that when you put the nut on as you saw just now they both reached okay. If you've read that situation piece of tubing I'll show you a little trick. What you do, come on in. And a piece of tubing about a centimetre long like that snipped off and then all you got to do is take that little piece of tubing squash it flat like that and you pop it in underneath the nut. So you put the nut that holds the battery terminal on, on top of that piece of tubing. And that little piece of tube acts like a spring and it pushes the nut upwards so it meets the screw. There you go, simple one it. Right, at this point, I've got everything connected up. 
ECU's connected, fuse box is connected, all the relays are connected up, and the earths are all in place, and the battery's connected. So at this point, there's no fuel in it yet, that's another thing to deal with. I just want to make sure before I do anything else, pop the key in, just want to turn the ignition on. I just make sure, just by dab the start button, just flick it, just to make sure that the start flicks in, and that nothing here is going to short or blow fuses or anything like that because this has been apart for 10 months and they've been messing around with that wiring for a long time you need a crack in a wire or something pop fuse goes and i've got to start all over again i've got a lot of work to do so wish me luck here we are it turns over and that's 10 months nice Starts on annoyed clicking nicely, everything's working good, right? Tank off, let's get some fuel in it. Okay, now the tap first, before I put fuel in this, don't know. I could take that out and disturb the seal. It's always a concern, if you disturb a seal, then you guarantee that you need to replace it. But at the moment, that didn't leak when I last used the bike and had fuel in it, so there's nothing to say it should leak now. However, seals left for two and a half years can shrink back and dry out. So as I said earlier in the video, I'm gonna chuck a little tiny bit of fuel in. This is the lowest point, so it will come down to this level, and then we'll just see. Right, we'll put it in the off position. Chuck some fuel in there. What do you reckon? Good luck. Good, good luck. Lovely. Nice. So we know that the tap is passing fuel, okay? Nothing coming out of this joint. Nothing at all. No wetness, no moisture around there. That's not bad at all. Saved a few quid there. Yeehaw. Right. Let's get it connected up. as you like but it's running <laughs> it's choking <laughs> sorry Ben you're right she's, she's we do bit, have the door open. she's got a bit green over there with carburetted bikes on choke it's just old school it really is Ooh. okay now it runs it runs it doesn't leak there's no fuel leaking anywhere there's no oil leaking anywhere it smelled really dusty to start with it blew something out of the exhaust <laughs> yeah, now, this baffle um, this baffle is from the Triumph uh, Bonneville exhaust and I will modify that and cut it down as you can hear with it out it does sound glorious but it is way too loud and that's going to cause problems it also shoots flames out there without something in so I will make uh, if nothing more just a spark arrester to go in there at the end uh, because that's going to be the temporary exhaust until I deal with the undertail one so that's sorted now we know everything is good and everything works all the connections are right the placement and the moving of all this and the manipulation of all this wiring and messing about for the last 10 months has proven to be 
no worries whatsoever. So it's done, it's all working, I'm absolutely chuffed a bit. Now the next thing, I'm gonna move it to the door, we'll put both the fans on to blow all the fumes out, and I'm gonna run this right up to temperature till both the cooling fans kick in, get the coolant right up to temperature, and I wanna check that battery as it's running to make sure it's not getting hot. It's extremely hot in here today, it's 31 degrees today, it's 50% humidity, so it's gonna warm up ever so quickly. But in the meantime, I wanna make sure that when it gets right up to temperature, as the system starts to warm up and everything heats up and pressurizes, I want to make sure it's all safe and good. And then really that gives me such amazing confidence to just finish banging everything together and get up the road and get it MOT. Right, so let's get it off the bench, let's get it installed safely by the door, get the fans going, and let's warm it right up. Mission accomplished and absolutely chuffed. I could not be more pleased with that result. Absolutely over the moon. That could have been so much more work. It seriously could. I could have had carbs clogged up and fuel residue needing to be stripped and cleaned and then rebalanced. They are absolutely smooth as silk, need absolutely no attention at all. Chuffed with that. The tank itself could have leaked. The fuel tap could have leaked. There are so many things that could have been a pain in the backside after two and a half years not having fuel in this and 10 months not having run. I'm gonna change the oil because it sat for an awful long time. It was clean, fresh oil. When I got the bike in, I changed the oil, but I'm gonna change it again. So I'll be doing that very shortly. It'll be an oil change to a little bit of maintenance video. I've got to sort some sort of chain guard out. So there'll be a little bit of fabrication to get a chain guard going. And as for the under tray, I may or may not use that thing that I started the other day. I'm just not so sure about it. I've got another idea using some basic fiberglass. I might buy a basic under tray and cut that up and adapt it because it is fiberglass and it is super lightweight. And that's brings me to the final point of today's video. I'm gonna weigh the tail panel. This thing that I've spent many months making, I wanna weigh this in comparison to the old big fat metal tail up there, and we'll see just exactly how much lighter this is, then I'm gonna update the board and we can call it done. Don't you think? I reckon. Time for an ice cream? Oh, you so owe me one. <laughs> so, all right, let's weigh that, because I know you wanna know. Right, let's start by weighing this. You remember this? The big old steel tail of doom. This thing was two Harley Davidson tanks and an awful lot of steel wire mesh and fiberglass and so on, so let's get that made. God dear, yeah. feeling it already, I do believe this is going to be a bit quite heavy. Quite heavy, I reckon. Which on the little part tool scales. Hook that up. Let's get a weigh on it. How's that? Can you see it? Yeah. There we are. 6.18 kilos. Now remember that this had a frame underneath it, a full-size original factory tail subframe everything was under it. now okay it was it was box section aluminium but there was an awful lot of it and it had thick slab parts and all sorts so that's gone as well let's just weigh it against this tail and the new tail wow look at that that is almost three kilos lighter 3.03 Quick calculation that is just over three kilos lighter in it. Mm, 3.14. 3.14 kilos lighter. Incredible. So I think that's a success. Just over three kilos lighter than the steel one, infinitely smaller, and I'd like to say better looking. <laughs> right, I'm going to update the board itself because what I did when I sorted this out, I took off everything that I took that off completely. I removed the weight of that, 
from the weight of the bike, so that doesn't exist. So I've just got to put the exact weight of this onto the weight gains, and that will then give me the, the accurate weight of the bike in regard to where it is from the standard machine. So let's just update. Okay, pen's running out. We've got three kilos, give or take a tiny bit, plus the two and a half kilos, don't forget, that the metal frame underneath it, the metal frame it boxes, that's two and a half kilos. We've got a total of five and a half kilos. So far, I really do need a new pen. <laughs> so there we are, five and a half kilos to add back onto the list. 31 and a half so far, that makes the 11 and a half into 17 kilos. So that's what we've put on the weight of the bike. Let's give it all that. 17 off 31 and a half, 14 and a half kilos saved so far. That is 32 pounds, give or take. So you're looking at over two and a quarter stone. Well over two stone in weight saved. That is a colossal difference and it's going to handle very differently. There's nothing else to add to this. All of the body work is included in that weight. So I'm really, really chuffed with that. And I think that is done. So we're going to put some little fun and games up there. And I think that's done, isn't it, Pen? Thanks for watching, sure is. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.